for help. Verse 12 says, And the Spirit bid me go. And the Spirit bid me go. That's the Holy Spirit above James, above John, above any of the people from Judah or Jerusalem. That's the Holy Spirit high above any man on earth. And that should have settled it for Peter. And the Spirit made me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. But now, look at what Peter has done. We must look at our personal lives. And if we have this crippling fear of man, this terrorizing fear of man, this intimidating fear of man, and we put our lives into the hands of a man, of a woman, and we know the truth, the truth of salvation, and the truth of righteousness, and the truth of restitution, and the truth of sanctification, and the truth of purity of heart, and the truth of abiding in the word of God without adding, without subtracting. If we know the truth that this is what to preach, and this is what to lay by, and then the fear of man will not allow us to do what the Lord has revealed we should do we might eventually miss heaven. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man shall be ashamed of him in the kingdom of God before his heavenly Father. I pray we'll be steadfast. I said I pray we'll be steadfast. I'll wait for your amen. You know, Peter could have then looked at Paul, and Peter could have said, Paul, I've been there before you came. I knew Christ in the physical. All the time you were persecuting the church, I was already an apostle. And you say that against me. Peter could have found a way to fight back. And Peter could have found a way to tell the old, old story of what Paul used to be. You make me come to shame publicly. Then you could have dug into the history of Paul and you could have brought something new you to you to you to look at what you were. Those are the people that don't like correction. They're incorrigible. And so when you say anything that will correct them openly, because Paul the Apostle did it openly, they have the tendency of saying we can dig out something too and throw that into the public and throw that into the social media so that he too will face the ship. What was the attitude of Peter? Look at Second Peter chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 14. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, here is Peter writing, seeing that she look for such things, be diligent that she may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Peter was saying, Have you heard about what I did? Have you heard about my compromise? Have you heard about my dissembling? Don't follow that. Make sure because Christ is coming, I have been corrected and I'm taking the correction. Make sure that you are found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Look at verse 15. It says, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. Look at Peter. Instead of fighting back, 
instead of throwing mud at him or stone at him instead of using his position using his experience and using his opportunity to also write an epistle instead of using that to throw that at him he said even as our beloved brother paul also according to the wisdom that is given unto him as written unto you he said that paul is a man of wisdom that paul is a man without compromise that paul is a man that loves the truth and believes the truth above even me look at that can you do that if something had happened that you were revealed probably directly probably indirectly and you then said how could he say that why didn't he call me into the private place and then tell me in such a nice way in such a good way how could he do that and just throw it out like that before everybody can you do like peter and say he has wisdom he has understanding he has revelation and it's a beloved brother paul look at verse 16 it says as also in all his epistles it says all the epistles that paul has written he wrote in the wisdom of god he says you may come across the epistle to the galatians he even confronted me there but in all his epistles speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood which day that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures understand the language his epistles the other scriptures he affirmed that the epistles of paul were part of scripture he didn't say no i'll not affirm him i'll not confirm him I will not honor him. I will not give any public honor unto him and say he wrote in wisdom, he wrote in good revelation, and he wrote the scripture. No, I will not do that because look at what he did to me. There are people who say they are Christians. There are people who say they are sanctified. And something that had happened seven years ago, ten years ago, the preacher the pastor was preaching and he pointed at them and he said hey church we must correct this that is not right and then singled out and said brother so and so sister so and so what he has done we will not allow it here this is the pillar of truth and the church of the living god it happened 10 years ago and that is still in the mind that is still in the heart where is the sanctification we talk about we sing about we preach about we pray about and we tell other people if we're sanctified thank god for somebody who is able to correct us somebody who is able to rise up and say that is not right now peter had a good attitude that's the evidence that a person is a real child of god is a real minister of god it says they rest the scriptures unto their own destruction now in verse 17 verse 17 says ye therefore beloved seen ye know these things before beware lest ye also be led away with the arrow of the wicked and fall from your own steadfastness he said whatever you see i've done and i wasn't steadfast you stand straight and you stand firm and you hold firm and you hold on and make sure that you are steadfast every moment until the very end the lord grant us grace the lord grant us power and the god lord grant us the fortitude to stand firm in everything every day to the end of our lives in jesus name we're coming to number three here number three the importance of steadfast perseverance without timidity 
the importance of steadfast perseverance without timidity. We're coming to Second Samuel chapter 12, reading from verse 1. Second Samuel chapter 12, verse 1. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him, and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. Verse 2. In verse 2, the rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds. Verse 3, verse 3 says, But the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished up. And it grew together with him and with his children. He did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. In verse 4, it says in verse 4, And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd, to dress it, to prepare it for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it, prepared it for the man that was come to him. Then in verse 5, and David's anger was greatly kindled against the man, and he said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that has done this thing shall surely die. Look at verse 6. And he said, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. Verse 7. Verse 7 says, and Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. You know the story. But can you be that bold? Can you confront a David, a leader? Can you confront somebody who is supposed to live a righteous life? Who is supposed to lead the people? But it's committed adultery. And he has even killed the man, the husband of that woman. And he has taken that woman to himself to add to his many wives. Can you discipline such a person? Can you talk to such a person? Can you confront such a person? Can you speak to such a person? Or are you just, will you be gossiping, talking under your voice and putting everything under the carpet? And when he calls you, you say, say, yes, sir, yes, sir. You have it in your heart. You have it in your mind. Is the one polluting the gospel? Is the one corrupting the gospel? Is the one mutilating the gospel? Is the one destroying the church and destroying the truth in the church? And yet, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. You do not have the backbone of Nathan. You do not have the backbone of Paul to say, this is not right. Thou art the man. Uh, that is why we're studying the scriptures. We're studying the scriptures so that when the time comes for us to stand straight and to stand firm and to correct what needs to be corrected, we'll be able to do that. Not that we are waiting and then the pastor now comes and boldly he says, we won't have that in our church won't have that in the kingdom, won't have that in the ministry. And then uh, instead of correcting 
and instead of shaping up and still honoring the man that can speak the truth and speak the truth to everyone no matter who instead of respecting the man then we join the people who are unhappy with the man and they're saying oh is he talking like that they say one deeper like to go back to 1973-77 that we not change look at where we are now are we not modern modern your bible has become modern your bible remain the way it ought to remain in jesus name i said you remain in jesus name you'll abide in the truth you will not run away from the truth you will not escape the truth. You will not get up and say, if that is the truth of salvation, if that is the truth of righteousness, then I pick my bag, I'm going. Where are you going? If you go away from the truth, you go to hell. But you stand and you say, that is the truth. And I believe that because this church is standing on the truth, I will abide in the truth in Jesus' name. Look at it. All these many years, I got converted, 1964. That's a long time. By the grace of God, I stand on the whole Bible. Anybody joining me? Anybody affirming the truth? Anybody that will stand and have a backbone that when somebody does something wrong in your presence, you have the boldness, you have the courage to say, No, Peter, no, David, that should not be. The Lord will give you backbone to do that in Jesus' name. We're now coming to point number two now. Point number two, the dissembling of the partners shaken by fear. In Galatians chapter 2, reading from verse 13, and the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, that is with Peter, in so much that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Three things here, the disastrous example of feebleness in ministers. When a minister, like Peter, what we have read, when he's feeble, when he's weak, when he doesn't have backbone, when he's like jellyfish, when it's not dependable and then it's wumbling how disastrous is that number two the disabling effect of fear of man disabling just tunes you up just makes you totally weak and disables you from doing what you ought to do and from saying what you ought to say. Number three, the damning emulation and feeding on misinterpretations. Let's look at number one here, the disastrous example of feebleness in ministers. We've read Galatians already. Let's see now in First Corinthians chapter 5, we're looking at verse 6. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. Your glory in is not good. What it means by that is when you saw evil, they didn't confront evil. They were saying that is our wisdom. Quietness, that is our wisdom. Glossing over matters, that is our wisdom not confronting evil not confronting backsliding that is our wisdom seeing people going astray and defiling the church of the living god and they keep quiet they said that is the glory of our wisdom there are people that think that wisdom is not telling the truth wisdom is avoiding the truth wisdom is not confronting error Wisdom is not speaking when we are to speak out. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven liveth the whole lump? A little leaven liveth the whole lump. A little compromise. 
a little kind of giving in to the weakness of the flesh i won't talk because if i talk they will understand that can corrupt the whole congregation look at verse 11 in verse 11 it tells us but now i have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator and you know or covetous and you know it or an idolater and you know it or a railer and you know it or a drunkard or an extortioner well such and one know not to eat if you know anyone that is called a brother a sister a member of the church and is doing something in the office that is already open in the office there and they know that that person that office this is the way he's doing and he says it's a deep alive member if you know anyone standing on the pulpit and preaching to you in our church and yet he's living a kind of a corrupted life a sinful life a backsliding life you know it and you are just well i won't talk about it who am i to talk about it who am i myself am i in heaven yet if that is his weakness don't i have my weakness then you are you're defending you are covering up a backslider and a little leaven lightness the whole lump. he wants to to speak out not to destroy them to help them to correct them so that they'll come out of their sin come out of darkness and come out of right and come to righteousness and to the light in jesus name did i hear any amen now in first uh, corinthians chapter 15 reading from verse 33 first corinthians chapter 15 reading from verse 33 it says be not deceived evil communications corrupt good manners and then in verse 34 it says awake to righteousness and sin not awake to righteousness and sin not for some have not the knowledge of god i speak this to your shame we're looking at uh, hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 jesus christ the same yesterday and today and forever whatever jesus condemned in his lifetime he still condemns today whatever jesus upheld in his lifetime is still opposed today whatever jesus preached the righteousness that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of scribes and the Pharisees shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven the message of Christ is still the same the commandment of Christ is still the same the expectation of Christ is still the same the truth in Christ is still the same Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever look at verse 9 in verse 9 it says be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. look at number two here number two the disabling effect of the fear of man if you have the fear of man it disables you it's like it switches you off you are plugged to the socket and because of that there is power electricity and it's able to turn your fan it's able to cool your fridge it's able to make uh, your cooker hot but now you disable the connection when you disable the connection nothing works no power no strength no fire no coolness no righteousness nothing prayer will not work preaching will not work all that we're doing will not scratch any surface because the fear of man has disabled us fear will vanish away by the way what are we afraid of pharaoh 
look at his age how can we be afraid of him Nebuchadnezzar what are we afraid of look at the age what are you afraid of him Belshazzar of all people the drunken man the idolatrous man what are we afraid of what's the age of him lions den what are we afraid of Daniel went there and he came out. You go in there, you'll come out in Jesus' name. Nebuchadnezzar's phone is, what are we afraid of? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they went in and they came out. You will come out. And all the Pharisees and all the Sadducees, everything they did and everything they threatened, what's the outcome? Where are they today? What are you afraid of? We will not be afraid of man anymore. Amen. The sibling effect of the fear of man. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 15. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 22. And Samuel said, At the Lord as great delight in bunch offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Look at verse 23 there. And for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He, the Lord too, has also rejected thee from being king. That's so. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, and so said unto Samuel, I have sinned. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people. Because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. When you were saved, what was your passion? What was your pursuit? What was your purpose of heart? when you were saved what drove you to your knees for sanctification how did you pray how did you consecrate your life at sanctification and when you came out of that altar being sanctified how did you feel in your heart and the first problem and the first challenge that confronted you when you were sanctified you remember how bold you were you remember how um, kind of standing steadfast you were what changed you what turned you around what made you so fearful why are you fidgeting and why are you going through life now under fear if you want to do anything now, you look here, you look there, it's so and so there, it's so and so there. What's the matter? Have you forgotten the price Christ paid for you, for you to get saved? And then he sends you on an errand and he says, This is what you do. And you never think about Christ anymore about the Holy Ghost anymore about the Word of God anymore about the power of the Holy Ghost anymore and all you are thinking about now that man that woman what will he say what will she say will she frown will he frown will he accept or will he reject fear of man and then saw that to say I have sinned for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and that was because I feared now it's unreasonable fear so the people what could they do the people could they tell me dethrone you from being a king no they could not could they replace him no, they could not. Will they fight him instead of fighting the Philistines? No, they will not. 
even if they ran away from you and left you there a little boy one david destroyed the philistines and you you are higher and taller and greater than david what's your problem our fears are unreasonable our fretting unreasonable our fidgeting unreasonable what could they take away from you they can't take your salvation they can't take your hope of heaven they can't take your joy they can't take the truth away from you what are we afraid of he said because i fear the people and obey their voice that fear is cancelled in jesus name i will not fear i said i will not fear you're not fear in jesus name and when that fear is cancelled and you live in the word of god by the word of god in the fullness of the revelation of the word of god the lord will promote you we're coming to number three here number three the damning emulation and feeding of misinterpretation emulation emulation that word emulation we see other people because Peter dissembled, Barnabas also followed, and many other people too, they followed emulation, looking at people, not looking at the word of God, looking at people, not looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, looking at people, what they will say, what they will do, and what will happen, looking at people, and not looking unto Christ alone, look unto me, all ye the ends of the earth, and be ye saved, and be ye healed, and be ye delivered, all the ends of the earth, we look unto the Lord alone, all the time, and even when you see the people you make nothing of that because Christ has not become all in all in your life I say Christ has become all in all in your life amen and because of that every threatening situation will come under your feet Every threatening man or woman will come under your feet. And you will stand like a real soldier of the cross ought to stand. We're not feeble civilians. We are strong and powerful soldiers of Christ in Jesus' name. Can you think of a soldier running back from the battlefield? And then you confront him. What did you run from the natural field? I saw a child by the way, and that child was doing like this to me. You're a soldier, you're going to the battlefield, and one child is doing like this to you. That's why you're right. Go back there and go and face that challenge. You will win the battle. We're looking at the word of God and we're looking at Galatians chapter 5 uh, from verse 19. It says in verse 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Look at verse 20. And then in verse 20, it tells us idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, emulations. You don't commit fornication, but you have emulation. You don't commit adultery, but you have emulation. You are not a witch, but you have emulations. And you don't have hatred, but you have emulation. You don't have wrath, but you have emulation. You don't have strife, you don't have sedition, heresies. Your only problem is you cannot stand alone. You cannot stand firm. You cannot stand without looking at somebody and emulating them and copying them. That's the challenge. And it makes you to be grouped with the idolaters and adulterers and fornicators and the witches and all the sorcerers and everybody. And then it says in verse 21, in verse 21, it tells us envies, murders, drunkenness, rebellions, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things, emulation included, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. They will do such things, emulations, 
they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I think it's better for everyone to get back our backbone, our strength, our courage, our boldness, and not be cringing and crawling and you know whatever. And I was so timid and so fearful because of what anybody will do. Emulations copying the people that go astray that backslide for any reason it will make us eventually lose and miss the kingdom of god because the fearful the abominable and the sorcerers and all liars shall have their part in the lake that burneth with brimstone and with fire i pray that will not be your lord that will not be my Lord. I will stand. I said I will stand. You will stand in Jesus' name. Now we're coming to we're coming to point number three. Point number three: the defense by Paul, steadfast in the faith. Look at it again. We're looking at Galatians chapter two, verse eleven. Galatians chapter two, verse eleven. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face. That's Paul the Apostle. I pray the same grace every one of us will have, and the same boldness every one of us will have, and the same steadfastness every one of us will have in Jesus' name. He said, I withstood him to the face. You know, sometimes. If someone is older than you are, who is higher than you are, if somebody who is uh, more respected than you are, who has been there long time before you came in, if he's doing something, corrupting the gospel, if he's doing something, showing a bad example, and then you remember, what we have learned, and you remember, the courage we ought to have, the steadfastness we ought to have, and with all due respect, you see respect to him, but my brother, what you are doing is leading us astray. And actually, we've been under this kind of compulsion for a long time. But I decided today to help you and to help myself and to help the church that this is not expected of you. Every time we hear the word of God, you have the tendency of laughing it off and watering it down and discouraging us and bringing us back to square one. And then somebody will come to you and say, do you know who you are talking to? Yes, I'm talking to one of our leaders. I'm talking to somebody who should lift us up, but is bringing us down. They will not allow you to tell the truth or to confront the one that is going astray. Not only that, sometimes it's not even somebody up there. It's maybe your own child. You're bringing your child to the church. And you taught him salvation, the word of God, that this is the way to go. And you see that somebody is leading that child astray and is telling that child, are you going to follow your father? Even when you grow up, are you going to continue in the church with your father? And you heard about it. And then you go to that person to confront the person. Why is it you are destroying my child? I'm bringing him up in the way of the Lord. I'm spending everything I've got to help him to be educated and also to make heaven. Why are you doing like this to my child? And you are telling my child not to continue with me in the church. You know, people don't expect you to confront the people. They're destroying your child. They're destroying your family. They're destroying everything you care for. They don't expect you to talk. They expect you to keep quiet. See your family going down the drain. Keep quiet. And see them derailing your children. And keep quiet. And see them 
mutilating and destroying the truth of the gospel and they expect you to keep quiet enough is enough if anybody wants to take your child to hell and you keep quiet maybe you are not saved yourself maybe you don't know the value of salvation but if you understand that this is the way of truth and all my family will follow me and all my converts will follow me and i will not allow anyone whatever the power whatever the understanding to silence me i'll take all these converts to heaven the grace of god will help you and so he said i are alone standing alone you will stand alone I will shoot him to the face because he was to be blamed. Look at it there in verse 14. And he said, And when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, Before them all, Paul did the right thing. And all scripture is given by inspiration and it is good for doctrine and it is profitable before them all they want us to follow psychology psychology says man has self-esteem and if there's anything man wants to gird and protect he wants to guard his self-esteem. So if you're going to correct anything at all, don't correct publicly. Don't say it in the presence of other people. Find a time when Peter and yourself will be private together. And then you say, then don't, don't tell him. Don't confront people. Don't have this, you know, honestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. They say we shouldn't do it like that. We should say, um, dearly beloved Apostle Peter, do you think that that thing that happened in Antioch is the right thing? When those people came from James, don't you think that may mislead some young people? And they say we should discuss it. They say we shouldn't tell them directly. The Bible says no. Everything we read in the Bible says no. We don't call them to dialogue. And we don't say it in the private. He said, I said unto Peter before them all if thou being a jew livest after the manner of gentiles and not as do the jews why compellest thou the gentiles to live as do the jews i pray that this duty the lord will give us the grace to perform the duty in jesus name Number one, the duty of declaring the gospel of Christ. The duty of declaring the gospel of Christ. Number two, the demand of defending the gospel against corruption. Number three, the decree of delivering the gospel to every creature. Let's look at number one there. Number one, we're looking at the duty of declaring the gospel of Christ. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 20 and we're reading from verse 24. Acts chapter 20 verse 24, but none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish the course with joy. I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify of the gospel of the grace of God. You will finish with joy. We will finish with joy. 
and when the Lord comes and he comes to take away the saints we will remain saints will not have gone back to be sinners in Jesus name look at verse 25 in verse 25 but now behold I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more look at verse 26 wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men verse 27 for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. I have not been negligent to declare unto you all the counsel of God. As the counsel of God has been declared unto you boldly and courageously, you too will take it up and everywhere you go you will declare it boldly and courageously in jesus name verse 28 in verse 28 take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the holy ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of god which he has purchased with his own blood we're coming to number two there number two is the demand of defending the gospel against corruption the demand of defending the gospel against corruption galatians chapter 2 we're looking at verse 4 galatians chapter 2 verse 4 and that because of false brethren or stable brethren wavering brethren corrupted brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in christ jesus that they might bring us into bondage they wanted to bring the converts of paul the apostle to the bondage of the mosaic law to the bondage of circumcision to the bondage of their ceremonial law and to the bondage of the jewish religion he said they came to spy out our liberty that now we're saved without circumcision we're born again without animal sacrifice and we follow the lord the way of the lord and christ is our perfect example and we follow him all the way through they came to spy out our liberty look at verse 5 verse 5 says to whom we give place by subjection no not for an hour they did a lot of things to confuse us, to compel us, to grind us, to push us, to draw us, to bribe us, to do everything that they might bring us to false doctrine that everything was stood for in the word of the Lord that we might change. They did it by frowning. We said, no. Then they turned, they did it by smiling. We said no. They did it by pushing us. We said no. They did it by pulling us. We said no. They did it by, you know, giving us things and being nice to us. We said no. All these things that you give us will not equal the salvation of the Lord. And they did it by withdrawing something from us. They did it in every way, but we said, whatever they do, whatever they say, wherever they go, to whom we gave a place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. The truth will continue with you. The gospel will continue with you. Sound doctrine will continue with you in Jesus' name. Jude, we're looking at chapter 1, verse 3. Jude 1, 3. Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation 
That means salvation come unto the Jews and come unto the Gentiles. Salvation come unto the first century and to this century. Salvation come unto the white and to the black. Salvation, the same salvation that Paul the Apostle had is the same salvation we have. Come on, salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that ye should, ye must, you have to earnestly contend. We don't sleepishly contend. We don't sluggishly contend. We don't haphazardly contend. And we don't superficially contend. And we don't shallowly contend. We earnestly passionately with all our heart with all our strength with all the skill we have earnestly contained for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints i will i said i will you know if you've tasted the gospel and if you know the gospel is coming from christ at calvary if you know that is the most precious thing you have how will you contend for that if somebody came to take your child away and you have the strength and you are there and they want to take your child away to the land of nowhere are you going to just be looking at them and say don't do that don't take that child away that's my child that's the only child i have and it be a bold are you going to be like that ah you'll be like that honestly i said honestly you know somebody came to your house and he said i'm asking for mrs so-and-so i say what's the matter that's my wife said where is she what do you want her for? And then she started sucking, going everywhere. And then she grabbed her and said, Why are you staying with this man? Come with me. Well, this man, say bye-bye to him. Are you going to be saying, Man, what's the matter now? Why are you taking my wife away? What have I done? What do you want? Shut up. Taking the woman away. Are you going to just stay like that? I'm asking you. Uh -huh. You're honestly content for it. You say, ah, uh, this one. You, if, you take, if you want to take my life, take my life. This one will not go with you. Am I talking about you? And now the gospel. Now we're talking about the eternal truth of the gospel the truth that saves and the truth that sanctifies and the truth that will lead people to heaven and somebody wants to take that away from you away from us and all of us here were so gentle were so nice were so spineless and then we we'll say why are you doing that you are corrupting the gospel you are taking the gospel away how is it now this is what we have been laboring for for all these many years uh -uh. don't do that earnestly passionately courageously wholeheartedly with everything you've got earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints i will i will look at number three there number three there is the decree of delivering the gospel to every creature what we have is a decree what we have is the word of god and we deliver to every creature without fear without favor without fear without favor it tells us in mark chapter 16 verse 15 and he christ and he the savior and he the redeemer and he the resurrected christ and he said unto them 
go ye into all the world and preach the gospel don't leave the gospel back at home when you're going out don't leave the gospel in a chest in a in a cover in a deposit box when you're going out take the gospel the whole gospel with the power and with the pungency that is in the gospel from the early church until this time take that gospel with you everywhere you go and preach the gospel to every creature amen. amen when you meet them high they are preach to them low they are preach to them men they are preach to them women they are preach to them the same gospel go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature say lord say lord i will in your strength in your power by your grace everywhere anywhere to everyone i will preach the gospel rise up and tell the lord i will i will i will i will preach the gospel to every creature i come across no fear of man no fidgeting no fretting no fear nothing that will stop you or muscle your mouth i will tell the lord shall we please rise up to pray together we thank the lord for the bible study tonight the lord has blessed us wonderfully the revelation we have received from the God of heaven through the mouth of his servant. Let's please take everything to God in prayer. We have heard the word of God, and the word of God has been given to us very clearly, directly, clearly explained, without any kind of contradiction. The message is so clear, and it's for our benefit, for our good, edification and comfort, and for our spiritual progress and their development. Let's tell the Lord what we have got tonight. The Lord will help us. He'll keep us standing strong and faithful to the word we have received, the good word we have seen, the life of one of the pillars of the church, how he shifted from the foundation of truth, the foundation of the gospel, the gospel of grace, he shifted. He shifted because human tradition, he shifted because of the things that are contrary to the established truth of the word of God. He shifted ground and his shifting affected other people, other laborers, other leaders, other servants of God. He was a man they looked up to. He was a man who was once used by God, a great preacher, a great minister of the gospel. And you remember this man on the day of Pentecost, Peter, precisely how he preached under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. He was greatly used, and he preached the word of God, and that word had convincing effect of conversion in the lives of the hearers. And they asked him, what shall we do? And he told them to believe on the Lord. And this man, a notable leader in the early church, we see what happened. Shifting of ground affected other people. His shifting of ground led other people to, to, that, to that life of instability. Instability, they couldn't keep on with the truth. They brought in discrimination, they brought in tradition, they brought in all that irrelevant things that are not part of the gospel human tradition. And we see the damage. We see the effect 
of that shifting of ground. That is what the Lord is reminding us tonight not to get into, not to allow, and not to accept whosoever, whosoever, male or female, whosoever, a leader, a minister, a worker, whosoever, a member in the body of Christ, whosoever, you have known the truth, the Lord expects you to stand with that truth. We see there, point number two, as the minister of God clearly outlined to our hearing in the study, is the dissembling of partners who became shaking. They were shaking, shaking with fear. Why should they come into this kind of negative experience that was unprofitable to them and to other people? The dissembling of partners shaking with fear. You know, the Bible says fear has torment. Fear has never done any good. It paralyzes a man. It weakens a man. It diverts his attention. It weakens and it makes a man not to be able to stand totally and firmly and forthrightly for the truth. When fear comes in, compromise will come in. When fear comes in, the truth of the gospel will be compromised. When fear comes in, you forget what the Lord wants you to say and stand upon and do, and you get into things that will just please men and satisfy human desire and human ideas that's not the will of god let's pray that we don't fall prey to that we don't allow the fear of man to get us out of the right way to get us out of the truth to make us to become like you know a wave just a uh, wavering just going here and there you are not able to stand straight and speak straight, and speak the truth. Once there is fear, you want to please people, you want to satisfy people, you want them to look at you and think good of you, and everything about you, you want them to say, yes, you are a good man. That's not the will of God. That's not what we should do. The Lord wants us to stand for this truth, and stand courageously, and stand committedly and we stand and do his will everything that fear causes and creates in the lives of those who had fallen those who had gone we must not allow it please pray pray for yourself this study tonight is very very direct to every one of us at any level you are in the church it's a study that is directed to every one of us without exception. We look at it, look inward, and look at yourself and pray for yourself. Because if a thing like this could happen to that great man of God, a man of the Holy Ghost, a man that was greatly used of God, don't live in assumption, don't take things for granted, don't say, no, I am strong. It cannot have wash it, as the Bible says, watch ye, quit ye, be strong. Watch ye, quit you like men, be strong. Watch it, hold on, and not allow any little, little thing here and there. We must stand and stay in the place of the truth and hold on to the truth, abide in the truth, run with the truth, speak the truth, and labor as we go on with this knowledge of the truth the Lord has given to us. No matter what anybody thinks of you for speaking the truth, no matter how they look at you, no matter what negative impression they form about you, you must hold on. Beware of emulation. Emulation is damnable and emulation makes people to feed on misinterpretation. Don't allow that in your life. Stand strong, 
Stand straight and stand for the Lord. We well, see point number three is the decree of delivering the gospel to every creature. A decree from the Lord, a decree given to us. The Lord has commanded us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is the decree of the Lord. We must carry it like that and give it out to men and women willingly, committedly, lovingly, and faithfully to the glory of God. The Lord had blessed us tonight through this Bible study. Let's keep all that the Lord has given us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for the blessing you have showered on us tonight, the revelation of the truth, the knowledge you have granted unto us through this Bible study. Father, we pray that by your grace and power, help us to remain firm and hold on to this truth uncompromisingly, unyielding, unbending, O oh Lord, in order to do your will and accomplish your plan and purpose for our lives. We pray for your servant. We ask that you bless him, dear Lord, and keep him standing strong and steadfast in this truth, courageously, uncompromisingly, to your praise and glory. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. Keep him, O oh God, to your glory and to your praise and honor, and bless the entire church, and keep us moving along with him on this right track. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.